everyone. We are going to jump into simple harmonic motion, our first HL topic of the year. Amazing. We're finally there. Um, we have talked about simple harmonic motion a little tiny bit in SL. And we, we, I think we did a couple of little problems with it, but nothing really in depth. We just kind of explained what it was. And what it is, is a repetitive motion where you have something that is moving past a point of equilibrium to equal distances. And so you think about a pendulum or think about a mass on a spring, and there's at some point right in the middle we call the uh, point of equilibrium. So I will show you a little bit more about that here in just a little bit. But what we really want to do in HL is tie simple harmonic motion to circular motion and waves. Mathematically, these are all not equal, but similar. They, they can use the same concepts and the same uh, equations, and it may not be intuitive right off the bat why that would be, but I'm going to actually go through that process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to give you the concepts. I'm going to talk about the equations, and there are no equations to derive, so to speak, we're just going to have them, and they're all, all the ones that you need, except for maybe one, is in the data booklet. And in the, um, in the worksheet I give you and the key, I explain what the one equation you might need is. And that's, it's actually from section 4.1. Is it four? Yeah, section 4.1. So it's not, that equation is not in the data booklet, but it's not that hard to remember. All right, so let's let's see why circular motion is like simple harmonic motion or vice versa. So let me bring up a little um, a little illustration here. All right, so we've got obviously circular motion going on here, and we've got simple harmonic motion going on here. This thing is going in repetitive motion. And there's a point of equilibrium here that it's going equal distances to either side of it, right? So that, that is one of the definitions of simple harmonic motion. The other def, uh, definition is, is that the acceleration or the force is negatively proportional to the distance or the displacement of the object from the point of equilibrium. All right, so how are these things related? Well, if you turn this circle, you got this thing going in a circle here. You uh, turn this circle edge on, so you don't see the inside here, you just see the edge on here. That circle, that green dot, is gonna be doing exactly what this green dot is doing here on this uh, oscillator, okay? Just simple harmonic motion going on here. This looks exactly like this in, well, it's, it's 2D, but you know, it's, and this is not 3D, but you could kind of consider this more like 3D and you put a John, you just look at it 2D because you're just seeing it going up and down, up and down, up and down, just like this thing is. All right, so I wanted to get that there. I wanted you to see that and, and understand how that works. And then we'll go back and start working with it mathematically. All right. All right. So let me get rid of these. And I want to bring this up. And it's from an earlier thing. I want to get rid of this. Because we're, we're, we don't need to concentrate on that right now. I'm going to get rid of these things because I want to build these up. Yeah, and sorry about that, but like I said, I was having technical difficulties, and I made it all the way through this lecture, and the thing died on me, and I forgot to come in here and erase this stuff to do this over, but okay. So sorry, it's going to be kind of messy, uh, but I don't want to have to start over again because this is like the, uh, literally, it's the seventh time I've started on it. <laughs> So, so we're just going to go with it. And fortunately, just about everything is where we need it to be anyway. So um, I won't make any mistakes. 
All right, so we've got two oscillators here, and they're, they are uh, simple harmonic oscillators. Pendulums technically are not simple harmonic oscillators, but at small enough angles, the gravitational pull, which is what the force acting on it is, is parallel enough, uh, the, the X component is parallel enough that we can say it's pointing towards the uh, equilibrium point. If it's way up here, the most, very little is gonna be pointing in this direction. When it's down here, very small angle, it's gonna be pretty close. So, so this can, we can estimate this as a, a simple harmonic oscillator. This is definitely a simple harmonic oscillator and we're going to assume there's no friction involved whatsoever. All right, so here we go. All right, we're gonna start out. And what I wanna do is I wanna graph this. And so you're gonna see how I relate this to circular motion and to wave functions as I graph this. Because when we, when we graph circular motion, we see the same things, right? Uh, as, as you'll notice. All right, so just to start out, this side of the equilibrium point is positive. Same thing over here negative on this side of the equilibrium point. So this is just um, for a point of reference because we have to have a point of reference. And we're gonna start off by pulling this mass to this uh, amplitude, all right? This displacement is as far as we're gonna take it and it's the amplitude. So we're gonna graph this over time in equal frames of time. So we've got it pulled back and we've got that pendulum pulled to its maximum point. And so our X is pulled to its maximum distance, right? Ma I should say maximum displacement. So that point is going to be right here. It's, I've just erased it. It's positive right and it's positive and it's at its maximum point the velocity at this point is zero it's not moving when it gets to its maximum point just like you throw something up in the air the, the highest point it goes to it, it just stops right there right you have an instant of zero velocity and that velocity is zero right here i'm going to use a totally different color what can I come up? Well, I can come up with white. Let's use white. I'm gonna put white here just to differentiate from all the other dots on here. All right, so this is white. And so that's at zero. Now then the acceleration, the tension on this is at its maximum point for this motion, right? We've taken it as far as we're gonna take it. And so the tension on this spring is at its maximum. Now, what direction is that tension? That tension is in this direction, right? So it's at its maximum, but it's in the negative direction. So it's here. All right, next motion, next time frame we take is right here. And we see it's at the equilibrium point. So at this point, X is zero. Right, its displacement is zero. It's, I'm gonna talk about its acceleration first. Its acceleration is zero. There's zero force acting on This is where it wants to be. There is zero tension on the spring. It's the, the shape the spring wants to be, that it's just there, that's, that's where it wants to be. So it is um, at zero, just like X is. All right, but the velocity, it's been accelerating, even though the acceleration has been decreasing as it comes uh, through here, the velocity has been increasing because even though acceleration is decreasing, it's still increasing the velocity. So at the point it reaches the equilibrium point, the velocity is at its maximum and it's going in the negative direction. So it's maximum in the negative direction. All right, next time frame, we're at the opposite maximum distance, right? So we are at X, we are at the opposite 
maximum distance, which would be here, and that it's in the negative quadrant. Um, the velocity, again, is zero because it's at the maximum. That's It's stopped before it starts heading back. And the acceleration is now, again, towards the equilibrium point. So that's right. The definition of simple harmonic motion is the uh, force acting on an oscillating object is toward the equilibrium point. And so it's, it's in that direction. So we have a maximum acceleration on the positive, in the positive direction. All right, come down here to the next one. We have come back. Now we're at the equilibrium point again, going the other direction. So now we are at maximum velocity in the positive direction, right? Our uh, displacement is at zero and our force and thus our acceleration is at zero. All right, so that that's, you, you might be able to see, I don't know, hopefully you can see it through this mess, but I'll, I'll draw it here in just a second. Um, this is starting to look a lot live, like wave motion. And then finally, we are back where we started. So again, we are at um, x equals, um, it's at the negative maximum. Let me see here. I started out, x was at the, po it's at the positive maximum, sorry. That was... Kind of confuse me there. Velocity is at zero. And the acceleration is at its maximum in the negative direction. All right, so let me draw what we have here. We have a curve that looks like this. We have a curve that looks like this. And we have a curve that looks like this. All right, that got that one off a little bit. I guess we could have, oh well, you know, hand drawing. Notice though, this is a full, this looks like a full wavelength. This is a negative sine curve, right? This is a cosine. This like, and this is a negative cosine, this, this, right? So these are cosine and sine waves. And they are completely, this is, we've drawn one wavelength. So this is a period, right? To go from this point all the way in back to this point is a period. So that means that there is a frequency. So this is just like circular motion and just like waves. This is, this is what they have, right? Periods and frequencies and wavelengths and so forth. So this is this is how we tie simple harmonic motion to um, to waves or waveforms, I should say, and to uh, circular motion. Now, since we can tie it to circular motion, we can use some equations. Now, first thing I want to put up here is angular velocity, because because this is sine waves and it can relate to circular motion, we can say that the angular velocity is equal to two pi over the period. You think about that, to go one time around is two pi radians, right? And one time around is one period. So if we want the angular velocity, it's radians per second. Right, so that is how many seconds it takes to go around, how many two pi radians, and so so there you go. There you have, uh, you can actually figure out from this graph what the angular velocity of this is. All right, and an angular velocity would be an angular degrees, what's the distance that it's moved in angular degrees. We also have acceleration. And acceleration is negative velocity squared times the amplitude. Okay, so negative. Every time you see 
uh, if you look up here, uh, velocity is going one way, acceleration is not going the other way, but actually look at it, let's not look at it at the very extremes. Let's say we're coming back this way and we're right here. Our velocity is increasing, but our acceleration is decreasing. So acceleration is, I'm sorry, velocity is increasing, acceleration is decreasing. So that's why the, the negative, uh, negative relationship there. Now, I, this, is, this is not the vector quantity, okay? This is um, the magnitude. They are both going in the same direction. They are just uh, changing their magnitude in opposite directions. Hopefully, I didn't confuse you because we're the <laughs> magnitude doesn't have anything to do with direction. Uh, well, one, I'm not going to go any further with that. If just that's the equation. <laughs> okay. All right. Now then, we have some other equations that we need to talk about. So let me get rid of this. I want to go to a whole new new form here. And um, these equations are derived from the other two, basically using calculus. We don't use calculus in IB physics. Therefore, you're basically just given these equations. They kind of do a derivation in the book. So if you're interested in it, go look at the book. It, it's fairly simple. It's pretty straightforward. You may look at this and go, oh, yeah, I, I recognize that right away, or I can figure out where that came from, but we're really not going to cover that. But what I want to do is, um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do it this way. So X, we want to find out the displacement. Uh, anywhere, say, the, the pendulum is going or back and forth. It's, oops, got its equilibrium point. Got the, the mass going back and forth, and we got its equilibrium point. Where anywhere along these, these points, we can figure out where this is based on this equation. And that is x naught. X naught is the amplitude. It's the maximum displacement. You can think of it as both ways, maximum displacement or amplitude. All right, so X equals X naught sine omega t, or X equals X naught cosine omega t. Wait a minute. How can we use two formulas? What? How do I know which one to use when? All right, let me show you. Notice in this case, because we started here, because we started here, this is a cosine, right? And, and velocity is a sine. So in this case, we would use the cosine version of the X formula. If we started here, and pushed it out, say, um, it would start here, and it would go to positive, and then we would end up with something that looked like a sine wave, we would use the sine version. Okay, so it all depends on where you start out. So in the case that I just drew for you, comparing that it was a cosine, we use the cosine version of it. Okay, so you need to know which one it is. Um, usually the problem will give you where the starting point is. And since they give you that starting point, if it start if for, for, um, displacement, if it starts anywhere, but the equilibrium point, you're going to use cosine. If it starts at the equilibrium point, you're going to use sine. Okay. Now we can also do velocity. And again, these are just given to you because we don't do calculus. All right, we have omega times the amplitude times cosine omega t. And guess when you use this one? When velocity is a uh, cosine. See, when, when 
x starts here, your velocity is going to be at its maximum in whatever direction it goes. But it's going to look something like, like that, right? So it's going to be a cosine function. So you're going to use the cosine function at that point. Or, and this is really interesting to me, it's minus omega x naught sine omega t. And if you understand uh, calculus, you'll understand why that negative is there. But there you go. All right, we've got one more. And this is not necessarily derived from calculus, but it's just given to us. It's plus or minus, the velocity is plus or minus the square root. Oh, sorry. Let me start that one over. Missing something very important. We'll get the wrong thing if we do it my way like that. Plus or minus omega, which is angular velocity, right? Times the square root of the amplitude squared minus the displacement squared. All right, so this is kind of, you can kind of figure out how far this has moved. What, what its new displacement is compared to where it started out as, or what its ma at maximum is. Okay, and we've got two other equations here. And they, they kind of make sense when you consider what velocity is here. But if we have a pendulum or a mass moving on a spring, we can figure out what its kinetic energy is based on its position uh, using this equation. One half m velocity squared, right? Velocity squared, in this case, is omega squared times the amplitude squared minus the displacement squared. Or, if we want to know what the total energy of a system is, all we need to know is the mass and the amplitude and the angular velocity. So it's one half m omega squared times the amplitude squared. That's if uh, this, we just want to know what the total is. You know, it's, it's kind of like the um, potential energy at the at at the uh, most extreme point away from the equilibrium, although we it's kinetic energy because the thing is always moving. So there you there you go. All right, we've got two more equations here, and this one, the first one is for a pendulum, and this is to find the the period of both of these things. So. Uh, they act like circular motion, so we can find a period for them. So the period of a pendulum is 2 pi, one circle, right? <laughs> one full, and it's not, not because the pendulum is going in a circle, it's because that one motion here to here and back again represents mathematically a circle that would that would count as two pi radians of movement mathematically times uh, lowercase l over g l is the length of the string of the pendulum all right and this is g is acceleration due to gravity here on earth it's 9.81 meters per second squared this is an excellent little tool to find out what the uh, acceleration due to gravity is on different planets and so forth. You take, a uh, say, a pendulum with a meter-long string on it, and you time it, how long it takes to go through one period. And you can get a pretty good estimate of the gravity. I like to do an experiment at school where I have you take a pendulum and you time how long it takes for it to go through its motion. And you do this at the very uppermost part that we can find. I have you go to the E hallway, those far, far down the E hallway, and, and take your timing. 
and then I have you go down uh, to the cafeteria and I have you do it there and you do your timing and it's really amazing but you take enough samples and you average them out and you come to a 0 0.02 meters per second difference since the gravity is not as strong on the second floor as it is down in the cafeteria. And you can actually measure this at school. It's, it's pretty good because you know the length of the string, you, you find the time of the period, and you can calculate for gravity. Kind of a fun, interesting activity. I, I, I like it. I'm not sure if the students do, but I, I find it very interesting. We can also find the period of the mass spring combination. And again, it's 2 pi, right? Because this motion and then this motion back over the equilibrium counts as uh, 2 pi r. If this was circular motion, if we put this up and it was going around in a circle, it would be going 2 pi radians around. All right, and square root of the mass over the spring constant. All right, so if you know the spring constant, of course, you can find the spring constant. This is one way to find the spring constant, uh, whether not using the force calculation, but just by using timer and knowing the mass, you can find the spring constant of, of one of these things. And that is using circular motion concepts. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover on this. Uh, um, just wanted to introduce you to the equations, introduce you to the concepts of why uh, circular motion, waveforms, and uh, simple harmonic motion are all related mathematically and how they relate to each other. Work on the worksheet and go over the answer key, and that should help you a great deal in understanding where all of this stuff, how it all works, how we can apply it, and uh, with some of the things you might see on a test. All right, with that, uh, you get to work. I should be here to answer your questions uh, and work with you until the end of class. All right, thanks a lot.